I feel the need for speed. Are you an adrenaline junkie, a thrill seeker, enjoying the danger zone? At one extreme, you have the throttle junkie who dreams of doing a double backflip on his Africa twin. Then there's Mr. Safety. His idea of risk taking is changing the brand of his radiator fluid, but only after weeks of careful research. Ever get worried about the risks you take? Are there practical steps you can take to get your thrills but do it safer? Let's find out. What do the scientists reckon? The old fashioned approach has been that adrenaline junkies actually are junkies. For example, the faster you ride, the more adrenaline kicks in, which releases a flood of dopamine, serotonin and endorphins. Some of these feel-good chemicals are actually similar to opiates such as heroin and morphine. And in a sense, we can get addicted to risky riding to get this natural high. But more recent research suggests there's more to it than just the adrenaline rush. This makes a lot of sense to me. We increasingly live in a sanitised world dominated by workplace health and safety, growing pale, fat and lazy in front of our electronic devices. Riding hard and fast on our motorbikes reminds us of what it means to be alive again, even if it's just for a few hours on the weekend. For years, psychologists have been telling us we actually need a certain amount of risk-taking and thrill-seeking for our mental health. And motorbike riding can deliver this by the bucket load. But some of us regularly finish a ride and realise we were taking too many risks getting those thrills. And we can seem powerless to control the urge. Obviously, risk-taking favours the young. No responsibilities, faster healing, less concerned about consequences. But as we get into our 30s and beyond, some of us may need to start reassessing our level of risk taking. So let's look at a few strategies to tame the inner beast. Your comfort zone, a very useful concept from the guys at Traction E-Rag. Bang in the middle, it's safe and not tiring. There's plenty of time to smell the roses and take in the scenery. It's easy to focus on good riding technique, but possibly boring for the thrill seekers. On the edge of your comfort zone, hopefully you are getting your thrills, but without too much risk. If you are trying to become a better rider, it allows you to further your skills. But of course you might wet yourself or leave skid marks in your pants. And outside the comfort zone, much higher chance of crashing an injury, a good chance you will tire fast, and your riding technique will probably fly out the window. Massive fun, of course, but you will probably shit yourself and shake your head afterwards, promising to take it easier in future. <laughs> Maybe. The main idea is to always know how much risk you are taking and how much you plan on taking each ride. This simple concept does make it easier for some of us to get the thrills versus risk balance right. What are some other options for taming the inner beast? Get your thrills from racing, then chill out for everyday riding. For example, some road riders go crazy at track days, then ride more sedately during the week. Choose your type of moto sport. Many of us stop road riding after too many close calls or the big accident and bad drivers make it a form of Russian roulette. Generally, the slower the sport, the safer it will be. For example, trials riders can take big risks with comparatively little chance of injury. And my riding group has chosen hard enduro for the same reason. You can get your thrills and challenge, but from much slower riding. Choose your riding buddies. If you ride with a bunch of nutters, <laughs> that ain't gonna help. Especially if they ride faster than you and you are always playing catch up. On a similar note, resist peer group pressure. If you hang with more experienced riders, learn to say no when you know it's getting too risky. And they might say things like, come on you wimp, get into it, as a joke. But peer group pressure is a powerful thing. Stand up for yourself. 
don't buy a bike that's too big for you. Unless you are very skilled, a lighter bike with less power will usually suit you better. I know plenty of middle-aged guys are buying two-stroke 200s or four-stroke 250s because they can slam that throttle, feel like they are Ricky Carmichael, but stay in the comfort zone. Protective gear. Good gear can reduce your chances of serious injury. The more you ride outside your comfort zone, the better your gear needs to be. And you should be checking out the full range of body armour available. Know yourself. Are you often impulsive and don't think about consequences? Do you struggle with anxiety or depression and going ape shit on a motorbike helps you temporarily forget your inner demons? Examine why you like to go hard and make sure you are making sensible decisions when it comes to risk taking. Sometimes we might just choose not to ride. An example, I rode dirt bikes as a teenager, but I deliberately did not get a motorbike license until I was in my 30s. I knew I would take too many risks as a road rider in my 20s and potentially get killed. Even in my early 50s, I stopped adventure riding for a while. I wasn't happy with the risks I was taking. After a five year break, I have finally started slowing down and enjoying the scenery. Are you an ultra safe rider or a thrill seeker? Hopefully we can all find that perfect balance of thrill versus chill.